Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sunil Kumar and welcome to the Meet the Agent series. Today we have Abhishek Kalawadi and Kamlesh Kamani. They, the gentlemen are being um, the number one name uh, in the real estate of Tarnit. And I think with every measure we do, either you talk about the number of sales, the highest amount achieved or the most property sold, either measure you take it, they are still the number one um, agents or number one team serving the real estate of Tarnit. Um, so today we're going to talk about how they started in real estate, what their journey been like and what it takes most importantly to be extremely successful. And that is the word extremely successful because that's what they are. They have become an inspiration uh, for a lot of young real estate uh, agents out there or people who are inspiring to be the real estate agents. So let's hear from them. Um, for just for a general introduction, uh, Abhishek uh, and uh, uh, Kamlesh, first of all, welcome. And thank you for being um, you know, with us on the Meet the Agent. Um, if we can just start with a little bit of your, um, uh, actually in a little bit of a stat in last 12 months, just give the audience a little bit like what have you achieved, just some basic numbers, um, you know, what was your um, numbers, what we achieved, what you achieved in 2022 as, a, as number of sales or number of clients along those lines. Do you have a um, little bit data on that? As a salesperson, you have to be a numbers person Yeah. on that one. True, true. So very clear numbers, statistics. We sold over 100 established properties in the last 12 months. And that itself is a feat and not been achieved by any real estate agent in the history of Tarnit. 100 established property and not counting any land at all in our, in our proper financial year. So guys, um, 100 uh, established properties and I'm sure at least 20 of them is going to be over a million dollars. And this is unheard of. The, the team of two are work extremely hard. They're extremely profession, professional in their, um, in their profession of real estate. Let's hear from them where they got started from. So Kamlesh, we'll start with you. Just give us a little bit more about you. What were you doing before real estate? What was your lifestyle or profession was? Yeah, um, basically um, migrating uh, to Australia in 2007, um, studying in engineering but my basically passion was in the property always um, and from day one I was in sales. Um, after uh, finishing my study here uh, in Australia, I actually started my business. I was running my wholesale business in uh, uh, equestrian industry. Um, but again, my whole passion was in the property industry. I wanted to jump into the real estate as soon as possible. Um, so in 2017, I started uh, with the real estate. So, and it's ongoing now, uh, yeah. going well as and well. And you are uh, married with um, one boy? Or? Yeah, I'm married and I have one uh, son. Um, How old is he? He's eight years now. Of time goes there as well, I believe. That's right, yeah. And then that specifically, the re this real estate has uh, given us an opportunity to do that life balance. So, and uh, Abhishek, for you? So, same journey as a migrant, uh, came here as a student in 2004 in Deakin University doing a master's in commerce. And you get to those lucky years, you get to apply for permanent residency of Australia studying after two years. So enjoyed the stay in the country and used to work part time in the sales uh, line while studying and continued the same passion for sales in the telecom industry for last 10 years from 2004 till in fact 2016 I was in Telstra so religiously worked across there all sectors and became the Telstra business center manager in Point Cook and they came to a point where I guess need to do something different than that. And then I met you over there. We had a good long standing. We used to have the sales career together in Telstra before. So real estate was like, it's always matched with my personality. I was always a people's uh, person and real estate is a people's game on that one. So meeting with the people, helping each uh, the people to go to their next journey, that skills was transferable. And that 2016, I plunged into the real estate business, working with Reliance and fast forward to 2022, I have never looked back. And now again, successful or not successful, but as long as I'm enjoying the process till date. Yeah, we'll talk a lot about it, like how you're enjoying the process. But just a point on that, um, me and Nabi uh, goes a long way back. We know each other from last uh, 
like since 2004 or maybe from five, we worked together. And Abby was the, the leading sales team um, or salesperson in our team at the time and we used to learn a lot from him. Because in two hours he could deliver more services than anyone else of us could deliver. So that's a long standing there. But just very quickly, how you come about joining? I know you were you were uh, when you uh, wanted to join real estate, you had few options. And I know a number of good, uh, um, you know, I know experienced people in the past they were approaching you because they knew what the caliber you have. Of course, I was in fact managing a lot of real estate Telstra accounts and wouldn't name those real estate in but yes a lot of offers came through but i for me the culture was more important my comfort in working along with that not just being micromanaged or something i just want that ease of comfort to let me fly and open my feathers whatever industry i go with and it couldn't be better platform than reliance and yes we knew each other but as a compliment to the reliance again there was never a, a, ever a, ever a moment where you felt intimidated or pressured or something it was always very calm atmosphere whether the market is strong or slow you are underperforming overperforming there was always help given at any point in time you can ask for that's the biggest thing enjoy it that's good thank you um, uh, for that we definitely grateful um, in, 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 on, in terms of the whole um, agency as whole real estate and I think there are few key members who have built Reliance to this uh, stage and these two gentlemen are uh, part of those core team uh, what we're talking about. So let's hear more what is now after being six years and then you know to the stage you are um, what does you, real estate mean to you and what you enjoy about it? Yeah it's um, basically when, um, when I was running my own business um, lots of traveling and um, having no family time and like that, you know. I actually joined the real estate. I thought like, okay, why is the real estate, um, you know, what is the option there? Real estate giving you that sort of freedom. And then uh, at the same time, um, it gives you satisfaction after working for someone, um, like selling for the vendor, um, helping to the buyer. You get that satisfaction that you have done something for someone, you know. And again, at the same time, you're making money out of it as well. So the, the real estate, that, that, that gives you so much of um, motivation to work for, you know, um, the client and uh, building that relationship with them. And at the end, you, you, you see that, okay, now I have done something, I have achieved something. So that definitely... And the help, the, as you said, the joy you get out of that is, the, I think, the real reward. Yes, real reward. And Abby, uh, we work and, and especially you work like some late evenings as well. And, and are you still enjoying that part? Um, what do you say about that? Yes, it all my family has been very supportive in that. So they know how much I enjoy in this people transaction. For me, it is like a karmic account. So it's like a delivering good karma since you uh, probably, I guess, uh, joined the sales industry. It was all mentally challenged industry. But the more you think of it, you're actually uh, enabling yourself to do good karma, delivering, uh, helping someone needy to achieve his next dream house, helping a seller to achieve to his next phase of life. So it is basically helping the needy person. And the sheer joy you get when you're delivering or settling a property or achieving some kind of a requirement for a client who was looking for what God knows how many months or something, the sheer joy looking at their faces and their family, it, you automatically get a lot of blessings which you didn't even expect it and that blessing counts and you just keep on traveling and real estate now it is like as a part of lifestyle. So that's the best part about real estate anybody who is joining real estate it will become your lifestyle whether you are socializing anywhere everyone talks about real estate everyone. and so it's it's not a on and off business the more you think of it so it's you have to surely enjoy it and the ride becomes more i guess fruitful and no pressure that time it's, it's like flowing in your blood now yeah yeah <laughs> true we can't i'm sure we can't live without it but i think the one point uh, I really like Avi and, and obviously that's definitely reflecting you and, and you guys both is the happiness. The more what you give out, that's what you get. Yeah. 
in life you know and i think uh, looking at your clients and looking at the people the more your friends more your uh, social circle now more than anything and you helping them and providing that service and giving that happiness and that's what you get back in life you know after even spending 60 70 hours in a week or sometime more longer you still um, you know um, leading a beautifully uh, personal life and a great professional life in that person when we joined real estate all these coaching manuals and everything taught us one thing and that, that stayed with me for a long time. Don't try to run for the business, try to just prospect and become an agent before they need an agent. And now that thing is, I think, working on because I guess our now clients who are following up, we haven't done any transaction with them, but they are like now friends and sheer joy of listing their property and they putting the onus on our shoulder that you know the market well i would really want to be driven by you guys so that except that just takes us to a next level to over deliver for those clients and work your like hard out to achieve the best and you know when the mindset is correct the intention is correct magics have happened so far uh, beautiful beautiful what has been your uh, one of the let's talk about the biggest uh, i know you have many highlights in terms of a selling pro what has been the um, the the highlight or the achievement you would count um, you know um, in your profession so far achievement wise like we can say um, in tarnet area the tarnet was uh, the, when we started the even median price was even like uh, half a million dollars yeah, yeah. and then in next uh, uh, few years as you can see it's like um, all the uh, sales happening around the million dollar now yeah. yeah so we are the one who started in 2018 18. that was the first ever million dollar house sold after that um, say over 70 percent of the houses which is sold million dollar which is sold by us yeah. so we can proudly say that we have put the tarnet on a million dollar map yeah, yeah. that's and definitely that's still, achievement uh, and um, making people millionaire a millionaire yes uh, yeah. even tarnet you can become a millionaire yeah. if you and invest in it yeah and still remember that first ever million dollar sale january 2018 i cannot forget the first phone call ever received when we listed the million dollar house in tarnet that when i spoke to that client the asking about that property how much is this property for and i said 1.1 to 1.2 and the word still stays in my ear did i call tarnet or turak <laughs> and i and that time it just was we were so driven that we have to do something which has not been achieved so far and till now 20 plus properties have been sold for million dollar in tarnet and we sold 18 of them so nearly 80 percent of stock we sold it and there are 163 individual active agents working in Tarnet. Yeah. So that's that's uh, you know what we talk about is 90 percent, more than 90 percent of those high-profile properties sold by um, this uh, team here. And so that's that is an achievement uh, to be proud of, and, and I'm sure they have pulled it up really, really well together. So now go, great work, guys! Uh, congratulations on that. And also, I like you to share one of your selling experience, which have been. One of the key selling experience or your favorite one? Um, there, there, there are so many experiences we have gone up and down in many, many cells. Um, but one experience what we can share is which, which gives you an idea like how to work as an agent, you know. It's not like uh, uh, when we go to the any appraisal or um, giving um, prize to the um, seller. Um, we don't think as a transactional business, you know. Um, the sale I can share like 413 Morris Road. Um, when we appraised the house, the house was not in that condition where we can get the maximum out of that property. We told the owner that basically if you want to go over a million dollars in this property, you have tried this property a couple of times uh, two years back, it wasn't sold. So if you want to do the same thing, it will be a mistake. So we need a gut to say that to the owner that like you don't sell in this sort of situation, you know. We said like, okay, you, you, you need to make some changes in the floor plan because this floor plan is not according to the buyer's requirement. And to get the maximum, you need to change, you need to renovate this part. And that was a big job. And uh, big ask as well. Big, big ask as well, of course. Owner um, decided to listen our advice. And then it took maybe more than six months. And then we put it in a market um, after getting as per our requirement, the house was ready. We put it in a market. We advertised that property for 1.1 to 1.2 million. And within three days of time, we sold that property for 1.225. 
so even got the um, extra hundred and twenty five thousand dollar for the owner um, which funnily what he said <laughs> yes, uh, he felt bad for the buyer when he present offer he didn't even give us that hug he was so much saying oh my god who pays that much money so that was a bit of a funny he was over the moon us. he says like i feel for the buyer uh, he paid that much money but actually because we he, it's it's like a joint work you know he made that possible uh, he listened to the advice um, and we actually deli- um, intentionally we wanted the maximum from that property for the owner and that's why we give them advice if we we would have make the transactional business out of that property as well 6 months back but we waited for 6 months to have the right product for the right market beautiful and under that that's what it takes uh, obviously and because you're not worry you were not worried about the the commission or the dollar you're going to make and you were more worried about like you were wanted to deliver that service deliver and you knew it it's possible it's coming from heart and that's why uh, in my experience couple of my client obviously when they deal with the abby you know sometime it's it's like the especially the couple of guys on babel road there was this guy who was asking a different price but you were very firm in the end they end up selling even lower than that you know but uh, you know and that's what it is because you know the market you are very very familiar and you always speak with your guts with your heart we can proudly say that 99% of our appraisal price given to the owner are bang on are bang on and sold within that range and um, some of the listing we have even say no to because it was let's say unrealistic or it's not that up to the market um, those property has been sold even less than what we have told I'm sure I'm sure and I have seen many example of that. Can we go a little bit in the beginning um uh, Abby uh, when you started what what um you use when you were creating you had no client because Tarnet you know you may have a couple of friends here and there but how you created the clientele how you create that base where someone else was do- hugely dominating that area. Yeah so how what you did uh, some of the basic things in the beginning to get into the market. I was always having the mindset of a go getter. Yeah. So I still remember that we were very initial stage of the our company getting formed and because Reliance we started 2011 I joined in 2016 so it was very early phase of our company to reach to that massive heights which we are right now I still remember we had to wait for our business cards to be delivered and I wanted to reach out to the people and it was just one phone uh, system was in front of me and the whole day was in front of me so the idea was to always reach out to the people so we uh, thought about it too much in the office rather than planning and all the executing i just went about it in a very simplistic way to pick up the phone grab the list introduce myself and that's where the journey started because once you speak to 10 clients the confidence grew to speak to 20 more clients 30 more clients the idea was to get the first opportunity of appraisal that was a seed which was planted in my head once that appraisal came through that multiplied into many appraisals on that one but the idea was to have the go get an attitude that nobody is waiting for you you are just one dot on the planet so if you think too big about yourself when you start that business going to flow you are in the wrong industry so you kept in going out and kept in door knocking yeah. i enjoy meeting with people and that's i always say in real estate if you are not a people's person this industry is not meant for you on that one because people no matter any race culture any religion they love interacting with people we are human made for that on that one so this is where you have to have the confidence in yourself that no nothing is haunting outside the world it's a people go and meet introduce yourself and check what opportunity is there in the market and you know uh, that whole uh, cosmic and uh, thing happens that all the powers in the universe once you think of something or manifest something god makes it happen and that and you put, uh, it happened obviously um, and there were hours and hours of uh, prospecting without any result for the first 6 months i still remember i had only two listing in the 6 months oh. or door knocking and then uh, after 9 months that uh, suddenly jumped up to 15 16 so first year i had only around 15 16 listings but the whole sheer joy of creating database database was really driving us that yes they uh, you know that the you're taking along a nice route success is just going to happen and that happened 
And I think um, if someone now uh, of our uh, guys are listening as well on this one, is you know, talk about uh, two listings in six months. Anyone, a normal person, will give up or see it is too difficult. And as I just said, this area was the area which uh, Abby was was doing, and we knew it. It's one of the toughest area in Darnet. But we knew he's uh, capable. He's what he's capable of doing. That's exactly what he did uh, now, six years later. So it's not a short-term game, obviously. It's a long-term game. And obviously, when you and um, Kamle join hand, then you know it's one and one become eleven uh, kind of a situation. Then obviously, you always kept your um, persistence. You know, like you know, you were always out there on on your given hours. That's right in the yeah, that's, that's right yeah. that's right and that's where the fruits of that labor we are achieving now that we go to an appointment or listing appointment we are already their agent before they needed an agent so there's no competition no price variation gaps or something the whole campaign has to be the dictated by us and they listen to our advice and we treat it like our own product and 100% of the time, I wouldn't even say 99%, we over deliver the result every single time. Beautiful, beautiful. That is right. And um, let's um, um, talk to you, Kamlesh, on this. Just tell us a little bit more about your Reliance journey. How, um, you know, uh, you started obviously, and then most importantly, how you went about it, you know. Uh, how's your journey has been with Reliance? As a, as a um, it's it's um, starting in 2017. Um, Reliance, like the main main uh, purpose of joining Reliance was like you know I I, I heard from the market the how the um, the team is working together there, um, and uh, once I joined that I already realized that oh yeah it's a it's a team a atmosphere within the Reliance. It's not like the everything everybody is working on their own individually it's all everybody is helping each other all the senior person are always ready to help each other um, and then the atmosphere what we are getting the sales atmosphere what we are getting uh, understanding the market understanding giving getting the area knowledge because being an uh, expert agent you need to have a 100% area knowledge um, getting those sort of things providing the resources all these things like reliance was up to the mark and um, that that definitely help us to um, be here where we are at the moment. Beautiful, beautiful. So team culture and uh, how uh, the team work together is definitely stood out to you. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. That's good. And for you, Abby, uh, Reliance. Uh, again, the culture speaks out louder than whatever success we have achieved so far. No matter how big name we have become in the market, but we are very grounded. The culture is more. Imp I guess the most uh, important thing in Reliance branding itself, even if the it works with an experienced agent who has been with Reliance in start, or even an amateur real estate agent who is starting with us, the amount of care being given to that person or any staff, or as a matter of fact, that just I guess gives that power to that individual to over deliver or outdo himself in any field, whether rental or sales, anything. And that is a very normal human nature. The more you take care of something, the more you get it back as a fruitful result, I would say. And that has been the hallmark of our company. People ask us, then in every single suburb, you have the top leading sales agent in your brand, but we take care of it. Yeah. And it doesn't happen automatically like that. It doesn't, very true, very true. Okay, we um, uh, getting towards the end. What advice you give to your younger self? I think, or someone who's starting new in real estate now, looking at you. You know, what advice, uh, Abby, will go with you? If I was to backtrack myself and look at younger myself starting in 2016 in real estate career, one thing which stays with me, and I wish I would have been a lot more smarter along with the hard work that time. It was all passion driven and we did work a lot harder. It was all, I guess, when the journey started with Kamlesh two years later, uh, when we became uh, the super team. And that just catapulted into major, major success, what we are achieving right now. But again, this piece of advice I would say, when you're building the list, don't focus just on building the list. Always focus, build the list and serve the list. So that's the most important advice I would give it to younger myself, which I was found guilty of it. 
Yeah, so database means business base and then what I was also talking about is not only building it but aim to serve it because that database, that business base of yours will serve you back for years, you know. And completely so, like what I have seen, like for the new agent, I would say um, generally real estate world is like you know they go after the name, fame, glam, after the luxury, especially, um, now, the especially now. Yeah, uh, if they think like because of that they are just stepping into the real estate, they are wrong. Um, come as a like, see this is your passion. You you want to work in the real estate industry? Start from the basics. Go step by step and then fame glam will follow you the luxury will come automatically but don't forget the basic get your foundation strong first and then as Abby said build the list and sell the list and don't be a transactional agent at all just uh, think about like your you are helping and serving and now that's a very important point you made because uh, what we see in a lot of younger or the new uh, agents they're starting with uh, the seeing someone like you or us and seeing the driving nice cars and, and suits and all that and expensive shoes or, or whatever the situation is so they they look for that you know but i think that comes way later and most of us uh, you know as as a, as a part of reliance actually do not promote it. In fact, we, we go other way around. We want to make sure we focus on our, uh, on our clients, on our business before anything else. So one thing, if you can give us a couple of things, what it takes to be successful, and I would say extremely successful like you guys, two or three things what it takes. Um, um, mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Um, consistency, uh, discipline, and um, hard work and smart work. So, um, plus I said like, you know, every act, what, whatever we do every day, have a two way of thinking, whether you think that positive or think negative. Real estate prospecting wise, when we say door knocking, door knocking, if you take it negatively, you are just going and knocking the door. People think that. And, but when you see that, okay, I'm going to the door to meet the people and serving them, giving them like service free of cost at that time, it's a different mindset. It's a positive thinking, you know, then you don't feel that I'm just knocking the door. It's not knocking the door. You are meeting the people. Yeah. True, true. And Abhi, you have to add that. I think he said it mostly, yeah. but that with the mindset, it can uh, be too many things to be taken out. Yes, mindset should be positive. But for me, the most important thing in the mindset is you have to have the achievers mindset. If you're not here to achieve something and you're just here that I'm just here to earn bread and butter for the family, then also it's then, then then there are plenty of options to earn bread and butter. Real estate, I guess it is a lot of fame and a lot of name in there, but you need to be consistent, but have to have the achiever mindset that you are here to achieve something. And if that mindset is not there, then there are many other industries to choose from. Beautiful. Now that's good. Uh, thank you guys. And I think last question will be, what are you looking forward uh, for 2023 and beyond? You know. You have obviously, you know, in, in this area or I would say in Tarnit, you have really achieved um, to pinnacle of success. So what is 2023 and beyond for you um, in real estate? It's um, always thinking uh, big, <laughs> big dreams there. Yeah. So um, 2023, we basically uh, looking forward to expand our brand now. Uh, we have already made the name in the areas. We want to definitely explore the new area as well. Um, going on a management side role um, so we can like, you know, mentor um, other people as well and uh, make the reliance bigger. It's good. So always has to be, in fact, not just future. Every day has to be bigger and better than it was yesterday. Very, keep it think very simple. Don't over complicate. That's always been a motto. And now excitement is uh, to take yourself and the brand you have taken, who has taken care of you for so many years. Now take it to the next level on that one. Beautiful. That's Beautiful. Probably. And I think that's an exciting part. Obviously, uh, you learn a lot from uh, your current position and where you going and leading next. You will be more responsible for another 10, 12, 14 or even more uh, professional. And I think that's a great joy to be in there. So guys, um, uh, this is Abhi uh, Alavadi and Kamlesh Kamani uh, together here. So thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure you can put in the comments or give one of us a call uh, to if you want more clarity in any of those points. Thank you guys and we'll talk to you soon.